So I'm going to start with the questions. Um, if uh, there's a particular question you want to see um, answered and I'm not covering, then please interrupt me and ask. So it has um, nine questions. I think they are all conceptual, so I'll just go through um, all the questions except for multiple choice questions. Uh, multiple choice meaning where you have multiple choices and a single answer. Uh, this is a multiple answer question, so let me go through the correct choices and why they are correct. Um, so let's see. So by the way, as a reminder, I recommend always that you look at the hint. Sometimes it just links you out to the section and just, you know, basically telling you read a chapter, <laughs> read a section. And uh, once again, I mean to be helpful when I do that. And, and, I, and I have no other additional, uh, you know, I say for the description and definition of torque. So once you go to the section, you can kind of uh, control F for torque, and then you can kind of read around where it talks about torque. <laughs> um, okay, so let me so first give you the right answer. So torque is uh, necessary to cause an angular acceleration, and with a greater lever arm, given force can produce greater torque. Um, yeah, and the last choice here, is, I'm trying to distinguish between um, sort of uh, uh, everyday use of the word torque versus um, versus how we use torque in physics. So uh, in physics, we torque does not describe how material has been uh, twisted. And each of these answers, they, um, they relate to different definitions slash description of torque. So this, the second answer I checked, it um, ties to the, I think that is the definition of torque that is given, which is Torque is given by lever arm times force. Um, if you look at the chapter section, that should be there somewhere. Yeah, torque um, F, well, not that. Uh, uh, so I never define lever arm. <laughs> oh, I, uh, so so torque is given by R times F. That's the lever arm times force. This section does need a little bit of rewrite to highlight that important information more prominently. So so that's what. Um, but this information, the torque is given by lever arm times force, is uh, what's tied to this choice here, and what's tied to the first one is the the rotational version of Newton's second law, that angular acceleration is given by the net torque divided by what's uh, going to be called rotational inertia. And um, I believe the chapter section does go over that. Um, well, do I talk about rotational inertia yet? Rotational, yeah, rotational inertia. Um, Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, this is the Newton's sec rotational version of Newton's second law. So, so that's that. Um, let me, oh, let me submit it, make sure I get the answer correct. <laughs> um, let's see, question two. Uh, choose all statements below which correctly define or describe rotational inertia. And once again, and <laughs> um, so if, if you, um, so, you know, I want everyone to read the chapter sections thoroughly and remember everything that's in it. Um, but as you are doing the homework, this is the opportunity to review. Um, as you, you read it through the first time, it's very easy to miss some, um, because it's long, it's dense, it's, a, it's a totally understandable to miss some things on your first read. So that's why the hint says for the description and definition of rotational inertia. I'm tr telling you what you can do, control F for it. So rotational inertia. And it'll highlight some sections of the textbook where um, it's uh, worth kind of reading through again more carefully. And then uh, that, might, um, that might highlight something that you maybe missed on the first read or also on the first read, it's easy to I mean, understand the words as they are written, but not quite understand the significance. So, um, so 
that's my recommendation for all the questions where Hint is basically telling you to read the textbook section. And I'm telling you that I'm, I mean to be helpful when I do this. I'm not, uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying that you should have seen it in the text. I'm saying, you know, it, the textbook is dense. So it's a, that's why I say, I say review. I don't say you should have seen it there. You should have reviewed it. So the correct answers here are, um, so the first one is not correct. Rotation inertia of a sphere. Uh, okay, no, that's not correct. <laughs> Given the same mass, um, more spatially extended objects are larger. That is correct, and I'll kind of show you on the table. Um, rotation inertia is a measure of how quickly. So the idea of inertia is that it takes a force or torque to change the. Um, Move state of motion or state of rotation to um, so an object that's already spinning, um, it, it doesn't come to rest unless there's torque. So this doesn't, that's not correct. This is correct. It's uh, how much an object resists angular acceleration. So let me just show that it's correct. And um, I think if we understood Newton's second law, then uh, this is hopefully not all that unintuitive. This is the rotational version of Newton's second law. Um, what's new is this material here because rotational inertia, it's a, a rotational version. It's not the same thing as mass. And <clears throat> that's why even though you are not really going to use these formulas, I'm linking you uh, these, um, this table of uh, rotational inertias. So uh, in, um, uh, in physics 4A, we would actually use this to do some problem solving. In this class, you're not gonna need to plug in any numbers into any of these formulas. The main thing I want you to see is how rotational inertia is greater for objects that are kind of more um, spread out. So easiest thing to compare are these two. I have a solid cylinder that's being spun about its axis. And I have a, a hoop that's also being spun about its uh, uh, axis going through its center. And you can kind of think of a cylinder and a hoop as actually being uh, shaped in a similar way. I mean, it says cylinder, but you can imagine it's much very, very flat cylinder. So it's a kind of a solid disc. Then um, you can imagine that the disc having the same uh, radius as this hoop then you compare these two, you see that the hoop with the same mass and the same radius would have double the rotation inertia that a solid disc would. So the hoop has more rotation inertia and that's because with the hoop, um, you have all of the mass at this as far away as possible distance r from the axis, whereas with a solid disc, you have mass all spread out to so that they occupy kind of portions that are closer to the axis. That's why it's overall rotation inertia is smaller. And you see that feature throughout this entire table. Uh, when, you, if, when you have a, a single object, depending on where you spin it, rotation inertia changes. And really the biggest difference is um, when you're spinning it about the center, then all these mass, they are closer to the rotational axis than when you're spinning it about an end point. Then you have all this that's much farther away than they were before. So in this class, conceptual physics, I want you to get that conceptually. I want you to get this. <laughs> and that's kind of where um, I, I, we don't really go further than that. You don't have to plug in numbers into those rotation inertia formulas. You don't need to know the rotation inertia formulas. Um, OK, so this is multiple choice. Uh, other than just verifying that the correct answer is correct, I'm not going to spend more time on that uh, unless there are questions. Um, so here it's a, it's the same idea. In, this actually ties in with the previous question where you know the rotational kinetic energy. So it's rotational inertia times angular velocity squared. So the ranking that you do on the next question for rotational kinetic energy, uh, since you are, uh, you have the, same angular velocity, really what you're ranking for is the rotational inertia. Given the same mass, given the parameter for their size, which I guess all the same, then it's a simple question of uh, what is, which one has larger rotational inertia. 
because they all have the same angular velocity, the way it's set up. So the order of rotation inertia, if you go through the table here, will be that the thin circular loop has the largest rotational kinetic energy. Um, and then, oh, I don't know if I have this memorized. I don't think I do. So let me go back and look. So I'm comparing between this solid cylinder and the uh, spherical shell. And two thirds is bigger than one half. So, um, so it should be the spherical shell next. And then it should be the thin solid disc. This is what's been labeled as solid cylinder. If you just squish it, that is solid disc. Um, so see, and then the solid uniform sphere. And there is a way to get this order without uh, knowing, having access to this table. Um, you can kind of try to imagine how the masses are spread out. Uh, which of them has more of the masses that's farther from the axis. Um, um, so I think conceptually doing it that way, you can actually get to the same answer too. The formula, the mathematical formula just makes it easier. Um, so let me submit it and then <laughs> that one is correct. Um, uh, yeah, so this is uh, kind of trying to match. Um, so really the thing that I want to emphasize is that in rotational motion, we don't introduce a lot of new stuff. All the, um, so I want you to kind of try to connect your intuition for linear motion to your developing intuition for rotational motion. So, um, so that's why, that's the point of this question. So let me just go through each statement and maybe give you the, what the linear version of the statement is. Uh, so for every torque applied by object A on object B. So the linear version of that would be for every force applied by object A on object B, there's a force of equal magnitude and opposite direction of applied by object B on object A. That suspiciously sounds like a Newton's third law. So that's Newton's third law. For every external torque applied on object A, there's equal and opposite torque applied on object A. Now, if uh, the, the, the li linear version of that would be every external force applied and the equal and opposite force. And here I'm trying to just confuse you with the equal and opposite. This doesn't match to anything. In the linear motion, when there's an external force on some object, you don't have guarantee that there will be an equal and opposite force on you. There can be depending on situation, but there doesn't have to be. A rotating object will continue to rotate unless acted on by a net torque. So the linear version of that is a, a moving object will continue to move unless acted on by a net force. And that's the, the law of inertia, Newton's first law. Um, angular velocity of an object is proportional to the net, no. So the linear version again is the velocity of an object is proportional to the net force. And you can find the situations where that happens to be true, but it's not always true. So it's not a law. Uh, angular acceleration of an object is proportional to the net torque and inversely proportional to the rotation inertia. And the linear version of that is uh, acceleration of an object is proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the inertia or mass. Or this one kind of sounds mathematical, so let me write it out. So the linear version of that would be, uh, oops, oh, wrong symbol. So that's second, right? Yeah, the acceleration, yeah. Acceleration, yeah, it's Newton's second. Uh, acceleration is proportional to the force, div net force divided by mass. Yeah, so you recognize that as Newton's second law, and this is the rotational version of Newton's second law. So, and the last one, I guess that's probably not a match, because, uh, yeah, constant that, force does not, it, you have constant acceleration, not constant velocity. So, clear, okay. Um, let me submit that. Good. Okay, uh, three more questions. Um, this one, uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, um, let me give you the correct answer and Really, the thing here is 
thing to watch out for is, is there a, a net external torque? And I think, yeah, to what the hint says. Um, so here, uh, angular momentum is conserved uh, somewhat in the air, touching nothing else. There's no external force other than gravity, but here the gravity is set up in a way that it does not apply a torque. Um, comet orbit, is, there is gravity, but uh, when you look at it carefully, you see that the, the lever arm is zero, so angular momentum is conserved. And by the way, this is an example, exact example that I cover in the, the, the seven minute video that I was pointing to at the beginning of this virtual class session. Uh, precession of a bicycle spinning vertically. Uh, so precession, that's a, a interesting one. And I get this mistake in essay questions all the time. It doesn't show conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is actually changing at a constant um, rate in terms of magnitude. Uh, and uh, it's the net torque due to gravity that's causing the angular momentum of bicycle wheel to change. Uh, formation of solar system that uh, conserves angular momentum. Uh, if you took astronomy, uh, there's a kind of a unit where they show how, why that results in a flat uh, shape of uh, galaxies and solar system. Okay, okay two more questions. And oh, this is multiple choice. Um, it, I'll just give you the correct answer. Uh, it's the kind of uh, action force, reaction force, or the rotational version of that is the action torque, reaction torque. Um, and then question nine. Oh, yeah, this is just the definition thing. Precession refers to yeah, change in orientation. You know, it's a very um, I mean, it's a very hard to understand sentence <laughs> once you've <laughs> read this and understood enough, hopefully um, it um, makes a sense. <laughs> okay, so that's chapter seven. Uh, any questions on seven before we move on to chapter eight?